get it on the nose, let's see what we're dealing with. And while I'm doing this, let me bring in the box. We've got the geisha and cherry blossoms. A very cool box. We'll just set that right there. I got a squeaky chair. I need to fix that. I've noticed that in the last couple of videos. It's annoying. Welcome to Whiskey's a Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and you guys are watching the last segment of my mini series on Japanese whiskey. So what are we gonna take a look at today? We're gonna be taking a look at the Matsui. This is a single malt Japanese whiskey coming out of the distillery called Kuriyoshi. And I know they have a couple of expressions, but we're gonna take a look at the Matsui Sakura casks. Let's pour it, nose it, taste it, talk about it. And then if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna give it a score. That is really, really light. So we're looking at a Japanese as single malt. This is coming in at 48% ABV, natural color, not chill filtered, and it's rested or aged in a Japanese cherry oak lids or cherry oak casks or cherry oak tops. This does not have an age statement, but it's rumored to be around three years old. This is a 750 milliliter bottle, and I picked this up for $99.99 in Phoenix, Arizona. Get it on the nose, let's see what we're dealing with. And while I'm doing this, let me bring in the box. We've got the geisha and cherry blossoms. A very cool box, we'll just set that right there. I got a squeaky chair. I need to fix that. I've noticed that in the last couple of videos. It's annoying. On the nose, it's extremely sweet. The sweetness is a vanilla and a honey. I get some citrus and a little bit of a sour note, almost like a sour fruit or a not quite ripe fruit. It kind of has that sour bitter note to it and lingering in the back, maybe some, some malt. Oh, it's also a little bit salt and peppery. There's a, there's a little spice back there with a little bit of a floral note as well. Let's get it on the palate, see what I think. All right, that is very spirit forward. I think this is, I think the youth is actually coming out of this quite a bit. Sweet, pineapple-y, pretty sharp. Vanillas and honeys are coming through, but I'm left with a pretty sharp, bitter note in my mouth here. It is crisp. And it is sweet, but I think the youth or the spirit is really shining through on this. Finish is pretty much gone already, but you can't trust that first sip. Let's go in for a second sip and see if it changes anything. Second sip, a little bit more spicy, more of that citrus notes coming through. That bitterness is starting to rise up. Doesn't seem to be developing in anything from the arrival to the mid palate and to the back. It's pretty consistent. The flavors don't seem to be exploding like the other Japanese whiskeys that I've looked at in the past. I'm not sure what the Sakura casks are supposed to do, but I don't think I'm really getting anything out of the ordinary that I would actually say would be cask influence. The box is beautiful, I'll give it that, but I'm not necessarily sure if the palette is very pleasing. I was looking at this on the shelf at Total Wine and More, and I looked at it and it caught me off guard. I'd, I've never seen this on the shelf before. So I took a look at it and it said single malt. So I got really excited and I jumped in here and I looked at the box and it said that it's a Japanese whiskey. It took second place in 2019 at the International Whiskey Commission. All the stuff that a whiskey geek wants is on the back of the box. Natural color, non-chill filtered, single malt, 48% ABV. All of these things are really co cool, nice looking box. And I think that's how they got me. I was duped into it by a fancy box. But hey, live and learn. Let's go ahead and add some water to this, see if the water is gonna change anything. We'll talk a little bit about some of the information and the regulations of a Japanese whiskey. And I'm still not convinced that this might be an authentic Japanese whiskey. And I'll walk you through it in a second. The information that I have on this, it's a double maturation, ex bourbon barrel, and then it gets uh, transferred to the Sakura casks. And there's some information out there that it might be an entire Sakura cask or the heads on both sides of the barrel might be the Sakura cask. I'm not exactly sure. Now, when I'm talking about the Japanese regulations back in February of 2021, this commission passed some regulations that said, hey, in the next three years, you need to come up to speed to be able to explain to people or show people that you're actually producing Japanese whiskey. There is nothing on this box other than the sticker 
that indicates that it's Japanese whiskey. Yes, we have a geisha and we have the cherry blossoms and we have the Metsui single malt, Sakura cask. There's nothing on here that says product of Japan, produced in Japan. It says distilled at Kiryoshi Distillery, but then when you go online and look for Kiryoshi Distillery, I don't think it looks like a distillery, it's a brewery. But if you just trust that the distillery is in Japan, go for it. And then on the bottle itself, it says that this is since 1910, Matsui Whiskey by Matsui Shuzo, the old brewery in Japan. Single malt, the Matsui Sakura casks, doesn't say anything about product of Japan. It has an explanation on the pack and then there it is. So at the very, very end of this description, it says, no artificial coloring is added, unchill, filtered, distilled in Japan. All right. So erase all that. It does say it on the on the bottle. So if they are following all those commission rules, it's going to meet the requirements. Have I mentioned there's a beautiful box that comes with this? Let's see if the water has done anything to this. And then we'll move on to the score. Get more of a grapey, pineapple sour note. I still get the sweetness, the vanilla, and the honey. Let's get it on the palate, see if it changed. The bitterness seems to have been tapped down just a little bit. It's still there. I still feel it. It's bitter and sour. That salt and pepper note is a little bit more dominant. The spice is a little bit more dominant after I added the water. To be honest, I think it got a little bit better with the water than without. Let's get that second sip with the water and then it's on to the score. As I was breathing in that time, a huge blast of fruit, very sweet fruit. We're looking at the pineapple note, a sour grape, good amounts of vanilla and honey. It's a little bit of a longer finish with the water. I get that salt and pepper, bitter, sour note, still sharp and still spirit forward. So on to the score. I was kind of hoping to finish off on a high note with Japanese single malts, but unfortunately this one is not hitting me all that great. And therefore I'm going to give this a 2.7 out of five stars. Coming in at a hundred bucks, I don't think it's worth it. Having that spirit forward note, the bitterness, the sourness, Typically, it does hit rather well with bitter and sour, but on, in this situation, it's just not sitting right with me. There's too much bitterness, too much sour. It does have the ABV going for it. I'm liking that it's 48% ABV. I can definitely feel it in my chest. It's a good warming feeling. The vanilla and the honey notes that are in here are really good, but all of that goodness is overshadowed by the bad. You know, well, bad is too much of a harsh word the negatives of this are outweighing the positives. So because of that, 2.7 out of five stars. And with that, my Japanese series has come to an end. If you guys are new to this channel and you're not subscribed and you like this information, give me a like, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined to do so, share this with somebody in the whiskey world that might get enjoyment out of it. Turn that bell notification on because I'm publishing videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Leave some comments down below about what you guys think of Japanese whiskeys. If you have any experience with this or any of the other Japanese whiskeys that I've done on the Monday mini series and stick around because I'm going to start my Monday mini series now with rye whiskeys. All right, let's put this series to bed. Enjoy your journey. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.